Alrighty folks, uh, when we last left the land yacht, um, we had the rear battery bank in, um, rear contactor and some other uh, fuse components and so forth installed and uh, had just completed a first um, drive of the car uh, with high voltage battery. So essentially uh, what I've been working on since then has been the charging system. And that's where we're going to be starting off with a uh, uh, series of probably a few videos as we uh, work through um, how we're going to be charging this car. Now, the first thing is that I have always intended that this vehicle would, <coughs> excuse me, utilize three phase charging. So the uh, socket, as we have seen in the past, the charging inlet socket is the IEC 62196 uh, Type 2 socket. Uh, 32 amps was the highest uh, current rating for it that I could get at the time. So we have that installed. Uh, we have a uh, six square cable uh, running from that charging socket on the side of the car in the place of the old fuel filler uh, down into this enclosure here uh, which is in the old spare wheel well uh, so let's lift that lid off and uh, hopefully now this will be visible uh, I want to run through uh, some of the things that are actually in here so let me see if I can do a bit of a Cecil B on this and just get a bit of a better shot uh, of this whole affair here that's a bit better so this big box that we see here is our 12 volt charger and it's its job uh, is to charge the 12 volt battery uh, that supplies power to all of the cars normal uh, 12 volt DC systems um, now unlike most people um, I don't run a DC DC converter um, there's a few reasons for that, and uh, I'm not going to get into them today, uh, but we can do so at a later stage. So, very simple charger. Uh, it just charges to 14.2 volts uh, currently at about 20 amps, uh, but we may find uh, that we need to increase that uh, in the near future, uh, so we'll have the facility to do that. So. The first thing happens here is that our three phase, we see these br three brown uh, six square cables. So there's three phase, neutral blue and earth green and yellow uh, come in along with some signal wires here uh, from our charging socket on the side of the car. So the first thing that they see is a RCD. Uh, this is a three phase RCD with a 30 milliamp uh, trip. Now, they're also uh, one phase and neutral is brought over here to a 10 amp RCBO. And what that does is that uh, combines a 10 amp uh, type B uh, two pole circuit breaker with a 30 milliamp trip RCD. And uh, this guy here is designed to supply single phase power um, to the 12 volt charger. The um, mains on relay and to battery heating. Uh, so that's provided by this, or sorry, I, I should say, uh, those circuits are protected by this uh, RCBO here. So. Coming back to our main input RCD, uh, the power comes out, again three phase and neutral, uh, come out at the top of this and go into a type K 32 amp uh, three phase uh, circuit breaker or MCB, which provides um, quite a lot of uh, surge um, ability, it's a K curve breaker. Uh, they're not very common, uh, but they're used in uh, circuits that have large inrush, uh, like motor uh, starting and uh, that kind of thing. So, coming out of that circuit breaker then, 
Uh, we go into two Silflex uh, cables that bring three phase neutral and earth up to the uh, front of the car via the um, flexible steel conduit uh, that we installed there last year. So um, this is the mains input uh, part of the charging circuit. That's where all of the uh, initial protection um, for the uh, uh, AC circuitry is carried out. Um, so this unit here uh, will be ultimately uh, enclosed uh, by a false floor here uh, that we'll have uh, installed when we get the project finished off. But first for a minute. Um, it's got a lid on the box with two vent grills that we'll be putting fans into uh, just to cool the 12 volt charger. So that's kind of pretty much uh, the rear um, layout of the car presently from an AC um, input perspective. Uh, so we'll move up to the front now and we'll run through uh, some of what we've been doing there with respect to charging. Alright, so we're now up the front of the car and uh, again where we last left this area here uh, we had installed the covers on the front battery box and had uh, <coughs> enclosed most of the uh, high voltage systems um, in enclosures and so forth. Uh, continued on here with the installation of this kind of a tray here along the front. Uh, this is basically made out of um, a substance uh, called cable tray. Uh, this is a six inch version of, of that. Um, it's used uh, for commercial uh, electrical installations it's a kind of a galvanized um, mesh it's used for hanging out of ceilings uh, for having large cable bundles uh, traveling through so in this case uh, it made an excellent uh, choice for me here uh, bolted in at the two sides into the frame rails and uh, made for quite a nice mechanism for me to uh, mount the charging system amongst uh, um, other things. So this white box here uh, that we have mounted on the, the uh, tray down di this end, uh, first of all if we go in there you'll see those two Silflex cables uh, that were carrying the three phase power um, they're landed into the back and uh, at the side here we have a conduit coming out uh, with some high voltage traction cabling. So this box here is what I would uh, refer to as the charger interface box. Now presently it's kind of pulling a bit of double duty because I don't actually have a charger installed in the car uh, I'm waiting on some uh, components to come in for that um, unfortunately as as is usually with these the, the case with these things I should have actually ordered them some time ago but um, just for whatever reason uh, I just wasn't uh, thinking straight which is no great surprise for me so let's whip the cover off here uh, run through what we have going on here now, <clears throat> as I say, this is doing double duty at the minute, and what you're going to see in here is by no means permanent. Uh, it's just a mechanism for me to proceed to the next uh, step of this process without having to wait weeks uh, for the charger components, because uh, we have to bottom balance this battery. So you can't bottom balance it unless we have a way of putting some power back into it. Uh, so I'm going to put this cover off. Okay, so what we have, uh, and I'll just get the camera down here again, so sorry about this, with more, uh, more kind of non-Michael uh, Bay stuff going on here, so see if I can get the camera just to uh, 
There we go. daisy yeah, We're close enough at that, I think. So, okay. Up at the top. Uh, three phase power. Uh, three lives, neutral, and earth. Uh, as in an earth terminal block there. See the green and the yellow block um, come in. Additionally to that, uh, we have a 30 amp um, DC fuse here and our main traction uh, positive terminal comes into this fuse. Um, additionally, beside the contactor, uh, we have a 12 volt DC relay. Now that relay is controlled by another relay uh, that is the programmable alarm relay in the JLD 404 amp hour meter uh, that we have uh, installed in the dash of the car. Now, <clears throat> what this system here is going to ultimately do when we have the proper charger in here is this is going to provide a safety net. The JLD meter is going to be programmed uh, and is currently programmed to only allow power to come through this contactor into some kind of a charger only if the battery um, is below a certain voltage and if during charge the battery exceeds that voltage for any reason such as a charger failure uh, the JLD will de-energize this relay, which in turn de-energizes this contactor, which removes all, um, all AC power to the pack charger. So, uh, <clears throat> also, having these components outside of the charger means that uh, we're kind of spreading out the load we don't have to have one huge box that I can not squeeze in somewhere that has all of the components that we saw in the boot area and all of these components and everything else so it just makes it a more distributed system <clears throat> so in the meantime uh, I need a simple quick and cheap means to get some DC current into my battery and uh, I had to fall back on an old strategy that I'm sure some of you will probably recognize here um, that I experimented with in the past and that is using um, essentially what are motor run capacitors as a means to ballast AC, AC current uh, coming in. So we have two 100 microfarad capacitors uh, connect, connected in parallel uh, that are fed from our single phase um, supply here that goes through the capacitors and into this uh, rectifier and then out to our uh, DC fuse and ultimately out through the black and the red wires into our traction battery. So this currently provides about 9 amps of DC uh, charging power which is grand uh, for initial as I say work here it lets me put some power back into the battery without having to wait around for it for charger parts to arrive but ultimately all of this will be taken out because uh, it's quite a crude system uh, but it does work and uh, if you want some more information on that then have a look through some of my past videos. I did a series of them I think they were called uh, <coughs> I think they were called capacitive charger experiments or something like that. So there's uh, I think it's three or four videos there um, from as, as, as I say past uh, experiments with that type of mechanism. So that's about it folks um, we're making good progress with this project it's getting very near uh, to going on the road um, I'm happy with the way it's starting to fall together for me so uh, with that said um, I think I'll sign off and uh, we'll see you all back soon uh, for some more updates and uh, hopefully we'll be building up uh, quite a nice uh, switch mode charger and uh, starting to do some experiments and uh, getting the thing on the road. So more stuff to come folks. Stay with us and thanks for watching.